When I look back through history and consider all the sacrifices in every war, and I try to grasp it all, come to grips with it, stand in reverence of all those willing to give their lives for something bigger than themselves, I am stunned by the sheer numbers. All those lives, all those families, serving their country, I can't always comprehend it. My heart is not big enough to take it all in, that each one didn't come home. What they lost for their service, what we gained for their courage. Today, I stop to remember. Every single number is one soldier, one sailor who got up in the morning and put on a uniform, one Marine who answered the call to fight for freedom one airman who knew the cost and went anyway, one man or woman who paid the ultimate price for many, and the freedom I live in now. Today, I remember. We set aside this time each year to remember and honor those who died in service to our country. Some were called to duty, others volunteered. But it doesn't matter, for their sacrifice was equally as great. They left home, never came back. In John 15, your son said, No one has greater love than this, that they who laid down their life for their friends. Surely they did this as well as their country and families. We pray that you welcome them with open arms. In Jesus' name, amen. Could we stand and worship Jesus together? At your name, the mountains shake and crumble. your name the oceans roar and tumble at your name the angels will bow the earth will rejoice your people cry out Lord of all the earth we shout your name shout your name Shout your name, feeling up the skies. 
Shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. Father.
grace and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence. Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. You close your eyes with me. Jesus, Father, we come into your presence this morning to lift up worship to you, Jesus. We pray that your spirit would meet us here in this place. Father, we pray this morning. Let this be our prayer that we have more love, more power, and more of you in our lives. We're about to sing that, Father. I just want us to dig deep this morning in worship to declare all that you are. To fill us this morning with your presence, with your love with your strength and with your power. Amen.
close your eyes with me. Heavenly Father, let that be our prayer this morning. More love, more power, and more of you in our lives. And Father, we give thanks this day on this Memorial Day for the opportunity that we have each Sunday to come here and gather and worship you. Father, we thank you for the freedoms in this country. We thank you those that laid their lives down so that we would have those freedoms. And Father, most importantly, we thank you for the life that you gave down so that we are free of all things because of your love and your sacrifice for your people. Father, may we never take these Sundays that we have gathered as a body, as a bride of Christ, to worship you with all that we have. Father, may you hear our words, our prayers, our songs, these prayers of our hearts as we sing the name of Jesus this morning. Would you fill us with your power, with your spirit? Father, may we use all of that power that you've granted us in this broken world to declare the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, you're the reason we gather. You're the reason that we sing. We give you all of our worship. And Father, as Pastor Blake would come this morning, may you pour out a special blessing on his heart, on his words that you've put on his heart. And Father, may we receive them and use them for your glory in this world. We pray this in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Morning, everybody. Welcome to Wesley today. Uh, the guys have note guides for you if you'd like to have those. Also, if you would like to be on our Wesley Weekly, it's an email comes out to you uh, about all the things that are taking place here. If you want a yellow card, they'll give you a yellow card as well to fill in and give us your information. Uh, we'd love to share that uh, information with you. As far as announcements goes and things to share uh, today. First of all, next Saturday, June the 5th, our tr- uh, trustees are having a work day. If you would like to sign up to be part of that, it's from 8 to noon in the morning. They're going to give us a punch list, and we're going to knock some things out uh, around the church and so forth as we prepare, uh, again, for the month of June's outdoor services. Here's the schedule, basically. Uh, 7.45, we're still going to be in here for our 7.45 service, and then at 9 o'clock, we'll begin outside. There'll be uh, worship and music and prayer, and Pastor Rich Stevenson will be preaching uh, that first set of, of, of worship time, and then we'll have a bridge in the middle, and about 10.30, we'll have worship and prayer with music, and then Richie Nazario from our La Casasia Church, he will be sharing next week there as well. And so the next th- uh, four weeks, as in the month of June, we're going to be looking at uh, 7.45 here, and then the 9 to 12, and Pastor Richie is going to be in that 10.30 time slot, and the rest of us are going to rotate in the front part of that. So that's our outdoor services, still streaming live uh, for those who would prefer that as well. On June the 9th, we also have an t- opportunity for you to serve. Uh, we have our Undivided. It's a youth event that'll be here, but it's going to be youth and adults. We, the more we see, the, we'll have adults here as well. And that's from 5 to 9 on Wednesday, June 9th. There's a sign-up if you'd like to help with, with parking, security, food, food distribution, uh, th- those kind of things. We invite you to be part of that out of Wesley Church. Uh, as well. Uh, The gardeners tell us that there are plenty of strawberries, so if you have your boots with you or you just want to go barefoot, you can go up. There's there's, uh, boxes for you to pick the the strawberries that are ready to go today. Uh, As far as volunteers go, also volunteers, if you were not able to be with us as we recognized you last week, There's a a card out there with different books on it, and that's our small gift to you. And this is everything across the board that if you volunteer, if you're on a committee, if you're part of our children's ministry, if you're part of the men's group, women's group, whatever it may be, whether you're one of our ushers and greeters and tech people, we have a book for you, and we'd love you to take those uh, and to, to receive that from us. Two last things. One, we are still looking for tech volunteers that help with the the sharing of our our worship service in the morning. And so if you think that's something that would be in line with you, that you'd be willing to give a Sunday to to share in that, we'd love that. And baptisms. We're going to do baptisms on June 27th. 
Uh, that's the last Sunday of June, and we'll have the baptismal pool out there, and, and so we'll share in that. So if you know those and you've heard people talk about, you know, I really should be baptized in the name of Jesus, we want to offer that to you that last Sunday uh, of June. Okay, today we're going to look at God's Word, Hebrews chapter 12, 1 to 3. Uh, we're in our closing week of having a heart like Jesus. Today we're going to look at perseverance. Uh, tomorrow and Tuesday on the blog, I'll be looking at being focused and aimed in our walk with Jesus, having a heart like His, if you happen to join us in that. But today we're going to look at, at what it means to persevere. And before I read the text, I, I'd just like to find out if some of you sometimes have trouble with persevering and getting through. Uh, how many of you have a uh, project at home right now that has sort of sat there for maybe a, a, a week or two about half done? Any, anybody have that? Um, ha- anybody have a project? It could be painting, working on the patio, building, whatever, something, and, and, and it's been six, six months or maybe a year, and it's still sat there like that. Anybody have that problem with the project? Well, Lisa and I, we have this uh, cement slab, 10 by 8, um, and it was to be the foundation uh, of our greenhouse. And there are cement blocks there for the lower parts, Uh, of it, and and so forth, and it's been there for eight years. So we, we, our greenhouse, um, it's it's not very green. Anyway, sometimes we have trouble, wait a minute, how many of you have an elliptical or an exercise machine, and and it works way better for drying laundry than it does for exercise? Anybody here like that? Okay. So, and, and if you're like me, I have started eating properly, eating well, 92 times I've started. So, so it's that, that, that being persevering and carrying through can be really hard to do. And Jesus addresses that for us in our Christian walk and what that might mean for us persevering as a follower of Christ. This is, again, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Therefore... Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run, excuse me, with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Uh, I, I've, I don't know if I've ever done this before, but in the first two services today and in this one here, I, I want to read that again to you. I think these three verses are so powerful for us in the journey, and I'll give a little bit of comment as we go through. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses... These witnesses were talked about in chapter 11, these men of faith, these, these people of faith, women of faith that, that before had gone on to, to be with, with God in heaven, and, and they're watching. It's a great cloud of witnesses. Let us throw off everything. Since we're in front of those folks, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And each of us has a race that we're journeying. Sometimes we journey together like right here, and sometimes we journey with the Lord, and we need to persevere in that. Uh, let us fix our eyes, and this will be more the blog tomorrow or, Wednesday, or Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our our faith, who for the joy, the joy that you and I have forgiveness of sins, the joy that he would return to his Father, the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider, consider think about all these things and it will help us. Consider him who in, endured such opposition from sinful men that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Might there be a blessing for us in the reading and hearing of God's Word. As we think about this journey that we're on, Scripture five or six times tells us that it's like a race, 
They use the imagery of a race. In fact, Paul, before his, his leaving this earth, said to Timothy that I have fought the good fight, I've finished the race, and I've, what's in store for me is the crown of righteousness. And, and, and so we, we have this journey like a race, uh, and what we found in our Christian journey in the race, sometimes in our Christian race, um, the, the journey is slightly downhill with the wind in our back and people cheering us on. And we like when it's like that. How about it? Downhill, wind at our back, people cheering. But sometimes this Christian race becomes pretty flat, not much wind to help us. In fact, maybe a slight breeze into our face, and not nearly as many people saying, "Add a boy, add a girl. And life is a little tougher in that place. And then sometimes the journey in our Christian faith is a steep incline. People aren't, are not only not cheering us on, but they might be critical, they may be negative, they may be mocking, and boy, can it be hard in those places of the race that you and I call our Christian faith. And so it's in those places today that I want to share with you about what happens is we need to persevere in those places. We need to persevere with what God has for us. So let's look for a minute these places of perseverance, uh, where that might come from. The first one is being led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit may actually lead us to places of incline, the places of difficulty. And we know this because in Luke 4, it says the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness, into the desert to be tempted by the devil for 40 days. Why was Jesus out there? Why was he in this tough place? Because he was led by the Holy Spirit to be in that place. So sometimes God is going to lead us into hard places. There's also Romans 5 where it tells us the reason why we may be in those tough places. To develop our character, to develop who we are. That, that you and I may have a, a patience which develops character, which develops our hope that we have in him. So how many of you found that some of the toughest times in your life, it's when you were most blessed? Anybody? Some of the toughest times you're most blessed, and, and so he takes us there. Peter writes it just a little bit differently in chapter 1 of 1 Peter. It says this, Now for a little while you might have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine, that you are legit, that you are a real follower and a real believer, and he may take us into the inclines. It's easy to be a believer when it's all downhill. It's easier to be a believer when it's level. It's sometimes hard to be a believer when the road is rough and on an incline. And so we want to look at that again. Uh, it's certainly not fun in those places, but it's where the Holy Spirit may take us. But the second part of that that I want to share with you is if we're not being led by the Spirit and we find ourselves in places where we have to uh, persevere, it may be, in fact, that we are being pressured by the world, led by the Spirit or pressured by the world. And when I think about the word world there, I'm talking about the, the flesh of this world, uh, spiritual darkness. I'm talking Satan and evil and all of that, and I know we don't like to talk about them much. But we do have an adversary. We have an enemy that comes after us. And, and it's part of living in a fallen world. It's part of human decision. It's part of the condition that we find ourselves in where we're ill, where we become broken of body, where we have broken relationships, uh, where, where there's temptations. And, and the results of those things can make life really difficult. And that comes because there's an evil one. One of the greatest blessings of heaven, which I rarely talk about, I talk about new bodies, heavenly homes, reunited with love, loved ones, and a banqueting table. One of the things I don't talk about a lot is the fact when you and I get to heaven, there'll be no more temptations for us. Oh boy, does that sound good to you? Sounds good to me. No more temptation. Uh, we, we won't have to deal with that anymore. No more accusation. No more ridicule and mocking. We'll be in the very presence of Almighty God. So, so how does Satan do this? How, what is his, his method of, of what he wants from us in that spiritual journey? Well, he wants to derail us 
He wants, minimally, he wants to disrupt us, but he wants to disra- derail us in our, in our work and our journey with the Lord Jesus and to destroy our walk. So we need to persevere in those places. But what Satan wants to do, he wants us to do three things. Give in, give up, and give out. That's his goal. Give in, give up, and, and give out. Now, what that might look like in giving in is to do that which we know we are not supposed to do, that God does not have for us. Um, th- that which is uh, hard for us sometimes to resist. And typically, when we have that to give in thing, it's a temptation to do something or to indulge in some way. Oftentimes, it's physical gratification. Uh, sometimes it can be simply lying to get out of a, a, a circumstance we're in. But, but there's this to give in to the temptation to walk outside the will of God. We shouldn't be surprised by that because remember Jesus in the desert, he's been here 40 days, he's tempted by Satan, and Satan says, take this stone and turn it into a loaf of bread. You can do that. If you're God, you can do that. And certainly Jesus could. And, but Jesus responded uh, that, that we're not to put God to the test. We're not to do that. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so in that moment, Uh, Satan wanted Jesus to give in to the temptation of doing something outside the will of God, and Jesus was quite strong about that. Uh, Sometimes Satan wants to give in because, and he'll say to us, well, that's just the way you are, and you're always going to be that way, and that's really not true. Now, let's talk about the the temptation that may come our way and things. I, I never realized and, and this morning, it may seem funny, you know, at, at 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night, the Phillies are losing. I, I never realized how tempting a bowl of vanilla ice cream can be. How many know what I'm talking about, huh? And you go, and now sitting here this morning with our bellies full and, and, and content in what we're doing, we go, yeah, why is that such a big deal? Like, I had to have that bowl of, of whatever it might be. And, 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 or, or maybe things uh, of the flesh, quite honestly. Um, we see the commercials, we see the a- advertisements, and it's always some guy that's just, uh, what's, lady, what's the word, buff, handsome and buff and all that, and, or, or the, the gal who's beautiful, and, and I'll just stop. Anyway, um, and, and it turns our heads, but that's what our world proposes to us, uh, and the temptation that comes to that, the allure of all of that that, that comes our way. And, and, you know, as we, we sit here this morning in church, go, yeah, why is that such a big deal? Well, at different times in our lives, when we are in, in hard places, those temptations, wow, if a relationship isn't going good and then that imagery comes, um, if we're alone, lonely, those things can have an impact for us to give in. And that's Satan's idea that we'll give in. He even says things like this to us. You know, just one time. It's just going to be once. Whatever the hurt, the habit, or the hang-up is, it is just once. Or the other one is this. If you've been in that, that rut, if you've been in that brokenness of sin, well, just one more time won't matter, whatever it might be. And so he wants us to give in instead of finding ourselves uh, pressing on through it. Second of all, not only does he want us to give in, if he can't get us to give in, he wants us at times to give up. Now, giving up is uh, instead of doing something we shouldn't do, it's not doing something, excuse me, we should do. Rich, could you go in the refrigerator and grab me a water, please? Um, Anyway, as we look at that, um, we, we see that we're called to avoid things. For example, he wants us to give up reading our Bibles, give up going to church, give up places where God had us and where things were good. He wants us to give up that call to forgiveness, to be gracious to people, to speak the truth in love. He wants us to give up these things that we know we should, in the name of Jesus, do, and we have to persevere through that. Serving Christ in difficult places. Friends, I just going to tell you an honest story. I'm at Wesley Church, the Red Brick Church. I'm pointing it's that direction. And, and there was a day I got some criticism. And, and as I was driving home, as I, was, I remember I was right by Smith Middle School, and I thought, you know what? 
I can walk this walk with Jesus, and I, and I can be a believer. I don't need to do it at that church if that's how everybody feels. Now, listen to that. If that's how everybody feels. No, no, I just had one. Thank you so much. Um, that's, that's one of those things where somebody was critical, and Satan was saying, why don't you give this up kind of thing. Am I making sense in that to you? Sometimes one opinion can do such damage if we aren't careful and persist in what Jesus has for us. And so Satan wants us then to give up and go, you know what, I'm not going to do that preacher thing. Nope, I'm out. But obviously that didn't happen, and it's been probably, I I don't know, 20 years ago that that was the case. So we find ourselves in a place where serving Christ, we need to press on even if people don't like it. Now, for some of you, your families, they think you're nuts. Some members of your family think you're nuts for coming to church right now. They think you're nuts for putting money in an offering basket to do ministry at church. You'll need to press on through that. Because Satan may say, well, you know what? I don't need this hassle for my family. I'll just give it up. No, no, we need to press on uh, in, in our relationship with, with Christ and who he is. Um, crit- criticism and negativity can, boy, it can take an amazing toll on us. The third thing, not only does he want us to give in and give up, but he wants us to give out. Where we, he wants to weary us. He wants to have us tired and worn out. And you go, after a while, you just say, okay, whatever. Just, just, I just want relief from this. It's like the mom in the store when the kid says, mom, 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 what? And the kid says what he wants. No, not till we get, mom. Mom, after a while, you know what the mom does? She gets worn down. She goes, here! And she just, go get it, you know, or whatever it is. How many of you ever seen that? How many of you ever wanted to go and correct that? Man, it's really tempting. As an old school teacher, man, it's really hard to watch that. Get that guy in a butt and put him in the car is what you want to do. That's a personal, just anyway. But we see that. See, but that's what Satan does. He wears us down, wears us down. Where I want, I just want relief. I know I shouldn't get wasted at night, but I am just so broke. I am so worn out. I'm, and, and, and people use alcohol or drugs or sexual things or anything just to find relief, just to come up. I'm so beaten up by that. There's two places that specifically I think the Lord laid this on my heart last night. Really important for us to understand. When you and I get in a place of desperation and exasperation, We need to be really careful there that we press through in Jesus. Here's what I mean. When we become desperate, we sometimes make decisions and choices that are not in the interest of Jesus Christ in your life and my life. As as a young man, some of you have heard this way too many times, I'm 26 years old, I'm not in a relationship, I want to be married, I want to have children, and and there's a desperation in that of not pressing on and leaning into the Lord. And it wasn't until I finally made that decision to do that that things cleared up in my journey. So sometimes when we get desperate, we do crazy kind of stuff outside the will of God. Or if we get exasperated where we're just worn, just, oh my goodness. Uh, Not to be weird, but this is exactly why people go into uh, businesses where they used to work and shoot people because they become exasperated and desperate and they hear the word of Satan, not the word of God. Obviously, anybody going in and doing something like that, that is not of God. That's, that's of the evil one. But desperation, and I'm not putting us anywhere in that category other than I'm just telling you, desperation and exasperation, we need to really, really, really be leaning into Jesus at that point. Would you say amen to that? desperation and exasperation. All right. Now, what does Jesus tell us? When Satan says to us, give in, give up, and give out, what does Jesus say? He says, hold on, press on, and lean on, lean on me. I know it sounds like a song from 1972. We'll get to that. As we think about this, Jesus says these words, whatever hinders us, throw off those things that hinder and easily entangle us. Hold on. What are we supposed to hold on to there? We're supposed to hold on to the truth, the truth of what God has for us. Gang, I want to warn you. I want to let you know, we are now living in a post-Christian culture. 
50 years ago, church, religion, whatever you want to call it, you and I call it faith, was way more prevalent than it is today, way more accepted than it is today. And there's so many more theologies that do not relate to Jesus and Almighty God and the Holy Spirit. And what we're going to do, we need to hold on to the truth because there's those in this world today, well, the Bible's old-fashioned. It was for back then. It's not for today. No, no. What does the Bible say? What is the truth of Scripture? And you and I need to hold on to the truth of what God has for us by faith faith and find ourselves pressing on with the Word of God. What does the Bible say about these things? And so we need to hang on to that because our world's going to bombard us differently than that. All right, so we're going to hold on to the truth. Gang, here is some truth. Those of you that have known the loss of loved ones who've known Jesus, here's the truth. You're going to see them again. You'll be reunited with them in heaven. They're in a marvelous situation right now with Jesus at the right hand of God the Father, and there's a fellowship of believers that takes place in heaven. And that's the truth. No matter what the world says, well, you know what? When you're dead, you're dead. That's, we have to hold on to the truth. Because Satan, is your faith really going to get to heaven? You mean all you have to do is believe in Jesus and all those that want to pound you with it? That's the faith. That's the truth. That's what Scripture says. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. Amen? So the truth. We need to hold on to the truth that, that God has for us. And I recognize that some days the truth is way harder. Boy, may I be so blunt? I would love to tell you. I would love to tell you. But I can't. That any two people that get married, it's okay with God. It's not. It's not okay with God. Marriage is a man and a woman united together, and that's what he has for us. Now, the truth is also, if those living a lifestyle outside of that come to Wesley Church, we're going to welcome them with open arms and love them. But if they ever say, Pastor Blake, what do you think about that? We have to hold on to the truth, no matter how difficult it gets. So we rest in those promises. I know it's easier, but, but see, here's the problem. Lack of perseverance, when we don't hold on, when we don't press on, you know what? We end up with shouldas, wouldas, and couldas, and regrets. How many of you have ever had shoulda, wouldas, or couldas? How many of you have had regrets? I can't imagine, I can't imagine that it isn't because you and I, I know in my own personal journey, it was when I did not hold on to Jesus and the truth that I found myself with, with the shouldas, wouldas, and couldas and the regrets. Now, I'll talk more about that because God is a God of grace. And I want to talk about that to you. So, so, kids, for a minute, I get it that it's so much easier not to do schoolwork. I get that. I, I get that it's so much easier, athletes, not to lift and train and to work out. I get it. It's just so much easier to sit in front of a TV or sit on your phone or sit on a computer. I, I get it so much easier. I, I also realize that for those of you that play musical instruments, how many of you took the dreaded piano lessons? Anybody in here take those? Okay. Whoa, my goodness. I, I've, some people, it sounds like that was torture. I never took any. I don't know. Was it torture? Anyway, so, but, but you know what? If you don't practice, you don't get any better. If we don't read, we don't study, we don't get good grades. And you know what I found out? Two things. One, we don't sleep very well if we don't do what we're supposed to do. And second of all, oftentimes we end up with regret. We end up with shouldas and, and wouldas and couldas. Now, Again, to the, to the older folks in here, we've lived in those places. Again, let me ask you again. How many have had your shoulda, wouldas, or couldas and your regrets? Because we didn't do, we didn't hold on to the truth. Now, here's the cool thing about Jesus. Jesus, he perseveres through the temptations in the, in the wilderness in the, and in the desert place. And you know what it says at the end of that text? It says, after he persevered, the angels attended him. They came to him. In other words, if he doesn't persevere, he's on his own. He can do his own thing. He can turn a rock, uh, he can turn a stone into bread, and he could jump from a pinnacle. And he, he, but, but you know what? Then he misses out on the attendance of the angels to his needs. Friends, when you and I as followers of Christ, when we walk in perseverance and hold on to the truth, oh, there may be people that are critical and harsh and not like us very much and all that, but as we, we will have no shoulda, wouldas, or cuttas, and the Holy Spirit's going to attend to us. But we have to hold on. Hold on to the truth and righteousness. 
Second of all, we need to press on. Take the high road. Head up, look ahead, and, and move on one step at a time. Just press on. You know, way back in the day, I did a little bit of running, three miles one day, five, every other day, three, five, three, five, three. And then one day I got this great idea that I would run to Willow Street. I don't know what I was thinking, but anyway, I call a gal at Willow Run, uh, who's a Wesley gal now, actually, and, and this is before I was a pastor, I think I was 25 years old. And I said, hey, if you see some guy laying along 222, stop, it's me, kind of thing. So, so I'd done 3535. So here's the thing with, with running. After the first half mile, every time I could have quit. It, it just, it was, it hurt that first half mile. Or, or, or like I got to the mile mark and suddenly it was, it was like, oh, I can do this kind of thing. And, and, and it's amazing. See, we need to press on because some days we need to press through the things that are hard because the goodness comes after that. And, and press on through those things that just seem to beat us. Uh, by the way, I did not realize how steep the hills are from Hestdale and Refton and going up to the traffic light at what they call, used to call Flowers Corner there. Oh, my goodness. But you know what? When you press through and you jog into the parking lot and, and she doesn't have to stop and drag you into the car, it's way better. Well, how much more spiritually... That when you and I press on, you know, they mock you, they ridicule you, they make fun of you, and you press on and you find yourself that evening, you put your head in your pillow and you go, oh my goodness, Jesus showed up big time. When we press through those, you know, when we're tempted for alcohol or, or tempted for gambling or tempted sexually and tempted, and we press through that and we walk in righteousness and we press on and we put our head in our pillow and the Holy Spirit speaks into our lives. Well done, good and faithful servant. It doesn't get better than that. The grace of God comes in those places where we press on. We can't let the world dictate what we're going to do, and we we need to press on through that. Last thing is to lean on him, to to lean on Jesus. Um, Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. 1972, Bob Withers. Uh, those of you young people, you don't know about that song probably. But anyway, then it goes, uh, just call on me, brother, when you need a hand. We all need somebody to lean on. Well, for me, obviously, it's Jesus. But then you and I can be the hands and feet of Jesus. We can be the voice of Jesus as we care for one another, to lean on one another when things are not good, when things are hard. We need brothers and sisters in Christ, and we need Jesus to persevere, to press on, to get through. Jesus said these words, I'm going to be your strength and your portion. I'm going to be your shield, your fortress, a very present help in time of need. And we need to recognize that. That that's what he wants. We need to lean, just lean into your faith. What you'll find out is your faith will be everything you need it to be in those moments. But if we abandon our faith in those moments, then we're going to find ourselves with shouldas, wouldas, and, and couldas. And, and so we find that, that Christ is, is real in, the, in those places. Here's the thing about the, the difference of, of Jesus in, in working in our lives and Satan working in our lives. And it's a crazy story, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway, and I'm a little embarrassed, but that's okay. Um, see, Satan tells us that what we're about to do, what we're about to give up um, and give out uh, and, and, and get away from in Jesus, um, that somehow it's going to satisfy us. Whether it's, again, the, the addictions we might have, whether it's uh, giving somebody a piece of our, our mind. How many of you have ever given somebody a piece of your mind and maybe more than your mind, and then afterwards you felt really bad about it? See, that's, see Satan always tells us that what we're about to do is going to satisfy, it's going to make everything better, but that's a lie. If it's outside the will of God, it can't possibly do what's good for us. Where when we follow Jesus and, and, and we press on and we persevere, a blessing always comes at the end of that. Here you go. Here's the story. Last Sunday, for the 93rd time, I decide I'm going to eat well. And, and, and I'm going to only put in my body that stuff which is good for me, okay? So I go all week till yesterday. I didn't drink anything but water. And then I had it one, to- one time I had an orange juice in one of them small cups. So I drank very healthy, if you will. 
I've only eaten a, a three meals a day at six o'clock. I can't eat. I don't eat after six o'clock, and I sleep so much better. And I know that. Blah blah blah. So I tell you all that because yesterday we had our family Memorial Day picnic. Okay, indoors, but whatever. All right, and Lisa made her kicking iced tea, really good iced tea. And I have this blue cup about this big, and I take one whole tray of ice cubes, and I pour it in there. And, man, I'm, I, I also had leftover stromboli, which was not a good idea either. So anyway, so I drink this iced tea, and it was so good. It tasted so good. I filled it again. I drank this iced tea again, and it was really good. About a half hour later, some of you are nodding already. About a half hour later, my stomach starts churning. Then my intestines start gurgling. And then my system said, we don't like anything you put in us. We're going to clean the plumbing. That's way more than you needed to know about your pastor, isn't it? And, and, and I was in agony, okay? Here's the deal. Spiritually, there is a spiritual point to this. There's times that Satan wants to say, oh, this will taste good. This will be good. And in your head, you know, you go, no, no, no. I've done that same dumb thing before. Four or five times in my life where I've gone without any soda or any iced tea or anything like that. And the same thing happens every time. And you wonder, you're a 64-year-old man with a college degree and a master's degree. How can you be so dumb? You can say amen right there. You won't hurt my feelings. But, but, and, and we go, whoa, whoa. And, and yet yesterday it all went that way. Well, spiritually, you know what happens? We know in our head, this, oh, this is going to feel good. We're going to like this and all. No, no. There's going to be, if you cuss out the boss, there's a really good chance something in your life is going to fall away. If, if, you, if you allow yourself to indulge in this habit, these things, it is going to jump up and bite you bad. Oh, yeah, but the first half hour is really good. Jesus says to us, we, we need to hold on, press on, and lean on him because these things come. And we need to be obedient to his word. Again, that's why we have the shoulda, wouldas, and couldas. It's why we have the regrets. I don't look back. I look back at my life and not one time do I have any shoulda, wouldas, or couldas or regrets where I acted like Jesus. But man, did I have ones. Notice I say I have. Here's why. I had shoulda, wouldas, or couldas, and I had regrets. But the Lord Jesus, you know how gracious he is to us? You know how kind he is to us? That, that when we've allowed the devil to win, when we've not persevered, if we humble ourselves before him, you know what he does? He comes around us. And he takes that. Do I have things I look back and say, oh, I wish I wouldn't? Well, yeah, but I don't have the angst in me anymore. I don't have the pain of it. I don't have the shame of it. I don't have the embarrassment of it anymore. And some of you go, must not. You tell us everything under the sun. Yeah, I, I, I do. I do. I want you to understand I'm just like the people in the chairs. But I don't have angst. It's it's what it is. And God's grace has said, I'm going to recycle your pain. I'm going to recycle your stupidity, which is amazing. Think about that. God wants to recycle my stupidity for you, dear people. How good is he in that? And so you and I, if, if we have shoulda, wouldas, or couldas, and you've not forgiven yourself, you have regrets, and you've just hid and harbored it, I mean, he already knows, so you might as well come before him and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me in that place. There's so many practical places where we, we have not persevered and press on, and I give you a list of, well, I will, when we're lonely and alone, when, we, when we've fallen, when we've failed, when we've, we've felt desperation, when people have quit on you, my goodness, you know what? They quit on me, I'm quitting on them. Kick them to the curb. No, no, we need to press on. When a virus hits, oh my goodness, people, we've had to press through that. 
I'd like to believe Wesley Church has done pretty good in, in continuing our ministry, even though there's a pandemic and masks and distancing and, and all. We need to press on. I'm going to say something. They may hold me out of here. Regardless of what our government says to us, we got to answer to him first. That's what we have to do. Do I think we should honor requests and be as godly as we can? Yes, but when they start taking Jesus out of the equation, then we're going to have to stand up. We, we, it's just where we're going to be, and it's very practical stuff. Where there's harassment, where there's criticism, we got to be godly. Last thing, before I close, which means another 20 minutes. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Something I've said a long time ago, and some of you folks that are relatively new, if you will, may have never heard me say this. Someone else's sin never gives me the right to sin. Okay, someone else's sin never gives me the right to sin. And, and I've rued the day I said that at Wesley Church already because afterwards I thought, well, that means me. I have to live like that. Because there's times I've hung up the phone and thought, <laughs> whatever that is right there. But, but someone else's sin doesn't give us the right. To, we need to persevere. But Blake, they're such a jerk. They're such an idiot. They did this. They did that. They did. Amen. But that doesn't give up. We need to persevere and hold on to the truth. We need to persevere and press on. We, we need to lead on him no matter what it looks like. Okay, let's close. First of all, if you have regrets, if you have shoulda, wouldas, or couldas, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you. I read the word. I've read this word right here. And if we confess our sin, if we confess our stupidity, you know what it says? He's faithful and he's just and he forgives us of all unrighteousness. After today, after this moment right here, you should not feel the, the angst of your regrets and your shoulda, wouldas, or couldas. You need to lay them at the altar of Jesus Christ. Oh, we don't, we don't minimize. We don't act like never. No, no, we recycle that for the kingdom. But we don't wear the angst of that anymore. And I, I want you to know that. So that's first of all, don't, don't wallow in that. Don't, don't, whew, don't, don't let Satan keep casting up to you. Well, you know, you did this in 1974. You did this in 1986. You did this last week. You did this yesterday. Well, okay, then let's, what it ought to cause us to do is get on our knees and say, Lord Jesus, will you forgive me? I want to hold on. I want to press on. I want to lean into you. Now, I don't know where it might be today that you need to persevere. I, I don't know what's going on in your life. I, I, I don't know if you have a, a parent or a child that's giving you a run for your money. I, I don't know that. I don't know if your workplace is just hard right now. I, I don't know what the temptations are. Is it a bowl of ice cream or things of the flesh, gambling, where must you press on in Jesus? But I know what Joshua said in chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. Choose this day who you will serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Throw down the gauntlet. Say, today's the day. You know what I've had to do for the 94th time today? I want to make sure that this body is, is the temple of the Lord. And I need to do so in a healthy way. And I can't allow my eyes to see or my mouth to eat or whatever that which is outside God's will for my life. And that's what he called me to. I'm going to start today again to walk being led by the Spirit. Do you, do you want to do that? Whatever it is. That person's just driving you nuts. Can you give them over to Jesus and walk and, and persevere? Now, you might have heartache today. You've lost loved ones. You, you have illness. You have brokenness of body. You have chronic pain. You may need to just say, Lord, I can't do this anymore. And so I'm going to lean on you. I'm going to rest in what you have for me. Those relationships, once again, to persevere and to press into that. The last thing, here's what I'm believing. That for some of us in here, we're, we're on the downhill kind of thing, and it's just a nice jog, and we're just doing our deal, and that's awesome. But you know what that does for us? Puts us in a really good place to be the hands, feet, and voice of Jesus in the lives of others, to cheer them on. 
Some of you may be more on the flat. You're, you, you know, it's not easy right now. It's, it's not the worst it's ever been or anything like that. And you're in that place. You know what? That gives you a place to, to share Jesus, to be an encouragement. Out of boy, out of girl. You can walk in Jesus. You can do this in the Lord. But some of you may be on the incline today. Some of you, whew, right now you're going through it. But God's grace is amazing. Amen? His grace is amazing. And so maybe we need to come around you today, or maybe as you come through this, there will be someone that needs to hear how you've persevered and what he's done in your life. Because there's a whole world out there, a whole lot of folks that have nothing to cling to, but we know who to cling to. We know to cling to the cross of Christ. People have said to me, and some of you have heard this before, people have said to me, Blake, your faith is... Your religion, they usually say religion. Your religion is a crutch. You know my response? Yeah, what's your point? What, what's your point? It, it is Christ that gets me through the day. It's Christ that brings things of blessing and all. You know, some people crawl into bottles. Some people crawl into white stuff up their nose. Some people go buy more stuff and want that. And some people lash out in anger and hostility. My number one coping mechanism, Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord. Amen? I'm not going to apologize for that. When people say that's your crush, okay. (laughs) Don't you want to just then go deal with it? But no, no, we don't. To whom do we need to be a source of encouragement today as we look around those who know brokenness? Team, would you come? Father, for the saints in the room, for the saints at home watching, I come before you, and wherever they are in this race right now, whatever season they're in, I pray that they might hold on to you, Lord, and your truth. That might, they might press on, Lord, and they might lean on you as we journey in this place. Lord, for those that came in here discouraged today by life, those that come in feeling uh, exasperated and desperate, oh, I pray that your Holy Spirit, you're welcome here, that you would move upon these lives and that we might press on in Jesus' name, that we might persevere until that day you call us home and that glorious moment we step into your very presence. In Christ Jesus we pray, amen. In the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, just give me Jesus, give me Jesus.
like to do is to pray over you this morning. <clears throat> if, if you have somebody yanking your chain and God's calling you to godliness and boy, it's been hard, but you need to persevere, uh, I'd ask you to stand. If there's some hurt, habit, or hang up that you're going through right now and, and boy, you're just ready to throw up your hands and, and, and you just need to persevere through that, um, I, I love to pray over you. And I'm not going to say anybody's name. Um, I'm just going to pray over whoever stands up in, in this moment. So w- wherever it is that you need to persevere um, right now, uh, just in silence, everybody bow your heads, close your eyes. And, and if those of you would like to stand, I'd, I'd love to pray over you this morning. Uh, Father, for the saints in this room that have heartache and difficulty, things where they need to press on, Lord, we, we bind Satan in the powerful name of Jesus that he can't get near these dear folks and tell them to give in or to give out or to give up. Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be upon each one of these, that their heart might know your residence there that their heart might know the truth that you have for them, that these are precious, precious children of yours, and Satan can't batter them and beat them up. Lord, you're, you're a shield, you're our portion, an ever-present help in time of need. And so I pray for these right now. I pray for the relationships that they may represent in the difficulty. I pray for the circumstances that you would work through these things, that, Lord, although Satan wants to defeat them, You want to build their character. You want to reveal the genuineness of their faith. You want to make a marked difference in the lives of those around them. May your fresh anointing fall on these in strength, in power, and in glory for your kingdom and their good. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Father, we do as a church come before you, and in these times, in this post-church era that we find ourselves, Lord, we, we, we don't want to be like the world. We're in the world, but we don't want to be like the world. We want to be like Jesus. We want to have hearts of love, hearts of care and compassion, hearts of grace, hearts grounded in the truth, hearts that will cause us to persevere in the most difficult times to be a testimony to those around us. Oh, Father, I thank you for my crutch. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for dwelling among us. And we as a church desire that in these weeks ahead, there be a unique and a marvelous flavor to what we do in Jesus' name. We pray specifically for a youth event on June 9th and that any young person, any adult, any elderly person that walks on these grounds would sense your very presence. Lord, it's our desire to be faithful. It's our desire to walk steadfastly with what you have for us. Lord, once again, I pray for these in the room that know illness and brokenness of body, those that have heard diagnosis and prognosis that aren't a lot of fun, Lord. And I pray for your strength in lives. We pray for our marriages. We pray for our families. We pray for our relationships that no matter what, we would steadfastly endeavor to walk in your light and your truth, that we would speak the truth in love, that we would always conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of your gospel. Jesus, for the joy set before you, you were faithful. And we see that same joy. A heavenly home someday and the very presence of your Holy Spirit here. And for that, we give you praise. And lastly, Lord, for those in particular hard places right now, might you send your angels to attend to them that they might know your very real nearness. In Jesus we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.
today and know that he goes with you in every single thing that you do. Have a blessed Sunday.